Hello and welcome back. Today I have a spectrum analyzer low frequency converter. And this is made so you can measure really low frequency also on your spectrum analyzer. Because usually even the modern ones, they start at 9K. And if you have an older one, maybe 200 or 500K. And to still measure all those signal below, there is a little converter there. And it's uh, from the design of the famous uh, BG7 TBL copied uh, many times. They are very distinctive with the green and the silver always in these good aluminium boxes and with the PCB but it is all shielded so the design at least in the basic was good. I have a lot of these boxes, frequency counters, generators, even bigger frequency counters, distribution, amplifiers, GPSDO, Almost everything has this name BG7 TBL. It's sort of a brand, but keep in mind it's more the design because it is produced by many. So what is in the box? It comes with some nice RG Visit 316, I think. End connector, great for the spectrum analyzer. Another for the reference. So, how many cables? Two, a short one and a long one. Very nice. It comes with an adapter. Oh, this is for US, but this is for Europe. I, of course, will not use because I have my linear power here. Also, exactly 12, not 13.8, it's 12. A video about that. So how does it work? Well, we have here the input, and the input is somewhere between 2 Hz and uh, all the way up to 2 MHz. So everything below you can then uh, measure on the back here. We have the RF out that goes to the spectrum analyzer. It is uh, active, there are some active components, so we need to power it. And we have the 1 MHz input, and this is from your lab reference. If you don't have a uh, lab reference, the 10 MHz, try to find out the 10 MHz output of your spectrum analyzer and connect it to this one. Well, it's sort of a frequency mixer. Um, here we have our low frequency input. Let's say we put 1K, which I cannot see on my uh, spectrum analyzer because it starts at 9K. We put it in here. It is then mixed with the 10 MHz here. In my case, it's a lab reference. Then here we have the mixed output. So then we have here the 10 MHz plus the 1K, maybe even also minus. And then we just set the spectrum analyzer with an offset, or you just did it yourself, this 10 MHz. Well, let's just try it first without, then later with. So I'll put my 1K directly to my spectrum analyzer. So I have here uh, 1K, uh, 100 millivolts top top. Well, we see here it starts from 9 all the way up to 2.1. So that means in the, it will be very difficult to see this 1K here in the beginning, but let's try. And then, well, it's kind of a mess clearly. We yeah, Probably this is the 1K here. So what do we do? We are going to connect the box to the spectrum analyzer. It came with this nice... End connector, I will use that. It came with a long cable and a short cable. I will use the long one for the spectrum analyzer. And we put this in the 10 nee, RF output here. Then we have the 10 MHz. I will put that in my reference. Also a nice BNC plug here. This goes here. And then we have our low frequency directly from the... And I will put inside the box here and we need to power it, of course. Here we are. Okay, and what do we see now? Now we are looking at our uh, 10 MHz signal. 
I didn't do an offset yet, uh, but if I switch now on the audio generator with the 1K signal, we can see it here now, and now we can properly see it, which we couldn't see before. We see indeed the, the plus and the minus, because the mixer just mixes it up and down both ways. But uh, we can now focus on our signal and see what we like to see. Maybe it doesn't look nicer. If we do set an offset, we can set an offset then to, uh, let's do 10. But I actually want to do minus, minus 10 megahertz. And now with the offset, this one, the 10 megahertz to zero, we see here that we are at, or very close to 1K, depending how good he did the offset. But we are here on the top. We can change the span a bit, so we can have a closer look at the signal. If we like the start frequency to be a little bit different, so we can really focus on the signal here. And this is something we can work with. Okay, that was very quickly what it does. But of course, we're going to open it. How does it work? Okay, it's open. Uh, it is not a casing with two halves that we usually have. So we needed to take uh, one of the sides completely off. And this only had one nut. So I decided to do that one. And then you can just slide it in and out. Well, here we have the LF side through three caps. I think they are a thousand microfarads. This looks like the mixer, the linear regulator. And well, here is the DC circuit. So this is probably for the DC. And in the bottom, we have some other components. Let's get the microscope. And let's have a look at the 10 megahertz input. Here it goes in AC coupled. Two diodes as a limiter. It is buffered, and here it goes through the band pass filter. Looks like an attenuation, and then goes into the mixer. When we look at the low frequency input, we see here a little cap for the higher frequencies, and on the back we have three big ones. I think they were all like a, a thousand micro. Um, here we see again the attenuation, and we go into the mixer as well. And when it's all mixed, goes to the output. Again, we see here attenuation, AC coupled, go through an amplifier, AC couple. Here we have again attenuation and AC block, and we go out to the spectrum analyzer. When we look how it's powered, we have the DC connector here, cross to a diet, uh, cap here, is the linear regulator, few caps, and another one here, and here through the coil for a clean power to the amplifier, and here we go to the LED with the resistor, and the power goes up here through the buffer. Here is the buffer of the 10 megahertz powered, and that's about it. So the main magic is all in the mixer. When we look at the specifications of the op-amp that uh, they, we use in the output circuit, the spp 5089 c we see that it starts working at 50 megahertz, which is weird because we use it around 10 megahertz. But it is probably because it's largely available. It is cheap. So I looked a little bit more on the internet and I found an item actually on the EV blocks. And uh, they said, well, what they probably do is the amplifier is not that stable below 50 megahertz. But because they use kind of the feedback here with the resistor and the cap, they kind of keep it in control. So then they make it usable for that frequency. Looking at the input circuit of the reference, you want your reference to be uh, very predictable. So you want to know what shape is your reference, if the sign is the square, and most of all, how loud is it, how strong is the signal, because we are mixing it with the signal that we want to use. And what they do here is first they just limit it, then they put it to the buffer. And the buffer output will always be the same. 
it will always be 5 volt, 3 volt, depending on the voltage that is on this chip. But the voltage is always the same. We saw the linear regulator, so it's always that voltage. So we limit it here. We go through the buffer. And then if, you, if it is 3 volts or 5 volts, it's okay. Both it will trigger or it will not trigger. And then we go here to the bond pass. But the bond pass also makes sure that there isn't, it is probably a square wave that we get here because it's just an on off buffer. And because we put it here through the bond pass, it will become a nice sine wave without any harmonics because square wave is very prone to produce harmonics but we filtered that out because of the bond pass so here and then we have a last attenuation so this whole circuit is very predictable and independent almost from what you put in what i mean with the bond pass is making it uh, a sine wave is of course because of the filtering it's done with uh, with resistors and caps and of course you get the delay and that's why you also get as a side effect a sine wave so here i'm directly in the reference and you see it is a square but when i measure here in the output of the bond pass it's the same filter i will compare them in the screen you see you get a very nice clean 10 megahertz sine wave By making this uh, reference signal very predictable by putting the buffer and the uh, low pass filter, you make it of course clean but also predictable in amplitude. And then you can design your other circuit, the whole low frequency circuit, you can design in such a way that your input signal is just as loud as your output signal. And I think that's what they try to do. And then you think, oh, I use this converter because uh, if you have a very modern oscilloscope, you probably have an FFT there and you can also see sort of uh, what you see on the spectrum analyzer and that is indeed the case it all depends what you want to do with the signal what you would like to see and how modern is your oscilloscope because otherwise it is much more convenient to do certain things on the spectrum analyzer which is actually designed for that when you have a very modern oscilloscope like this one of the new 12 bits this FFT is also very amazing and you will also be able to measure these signals of this low frequency but of course you have a lot more options on your spectrum analyzer but when we look at an older oscilloscope this will absolutely be a challenge that uh, you get sort of out of it but that converter of course is much more uh, convenient Well, we do see the signal. Another useful design from a BG7 TBL. I find it is very useful. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.